I'd like to welcome everybody to the service today. I'm Josh Bragger. I'm Lincoln's grandpa and Allie's dad. She's asked me to conduct. Uh, we'll have a opening prayer by Brother Lynn Bragger. A life sketch by Sister Janae Glover. After we'll hear from, did I miss something? Oh, oh, we're going to have a, an opening hymn, which will be I Am a Child of God. So we'll do that first. Uh, we'll, we'll go to that point. Our dear, kind, heavenly Father, we are so grateful for thy many blessings, for all you do for us every day, for thy peace and solace that helpeth at times like these. We're grateful for this dear young little child, Lincoln, in our lives and the blessing of having the opportunity to know him and be with him. Father in heaven, we're grateful for all thy help in our lives. And we ask thee at this time to invoke a special blessing upon his parents and family that thy spirit may permeate and help and bless them. Father in heaven, we ask thee to bless us, those who are to speak and bless us through this meeting that we may fill of thy spirit and be guided by thee. Again, we're grateful for all that thou does for us, and we ask these things in the name of thy Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
like to thank uh, Misa Finley and Noreen Mortensen for the music. Uh, we'll have a live sketch tribute by his grandmother, Janae Glover. His mom will have a talk for us. Then after we'll have a musical selection by the Summit Singers, One Sweet Little Baby. After we'll hear from his dad, Drew Glover. And then I'll have some closing remarks. biggest crybaby in my family so we all have our people that we picked today that are going to help us with our talk in case we can't handle it so grace you're my person um lincoln drew glover was born on february 16th 2023 and passed away on february 26th 2023 in the loving arms of his mother. And during his short term here on earth, he touched many lives with his pure and mighty spirit. Despite being born with an extremely rare genetic condition, Lincoln was a fighter. As information started to come forward that Lincoln would have some health concerns, understandably, we were all pretty scared. I remember driving to the hospital in Logan after Drew and Allie had met with a specialist from Salt Lake and he had shared with them that Lincoln was extremely small and had something wrong with his heart. Allie was in labor and delivery being monitored. I walked into the room. It was pretty quiet except for Lincoln's heartbeat, strong and steady. Every nurse who walked into the room commented that he sounded great. It was like Lincoln's gentle reminder to us that I'm here, guys. It's okay. I'm strong. I'm a fighter. We would come to rely on his fighting spirit, his kicks, and his strong heartbeat throughout the coming weeks and many doctor's appointments. I would ask Allie, how is baby boy today? And she would always respond the same, busy as ever. I loved hearing those words. It seemed like every time a doctor had concerning news for us, a moment later they would hook Allie up and sure enough, there was that reassuring heartbeat, strong as ever, filling us with hope and helping us move forward with faith. And that is exactly what Drew and Allie did. Although the doctors overwhelmingly talked about Lincoln's small size, Allie always felt like they were wrong. They asked everyone to fast and pray that Lincoln would grow, and he did. About an hour before he was born, we were talking in the delivery room and guessing what we thought he would weigh. Everyone was pretty sure it would be about three pounds, which was pretty scary since the doctors had said if he had any chance of surviving, he was going to need to grow. The comment of four pounds was made, and then we all kind of laughed a little. There's no way. I said, if he weighs four pounds, we will all feel like we have won the lottery. Lincoln at this point was probably laughing and thinking, hmm, I'll show them. As he amazed all the doctors, all of us actually, except for Allie, by weighing in at four pounds and one ounce. He defied all the odds to make it here to meet his loving parents, Drew and Allie, his grandparents, and many other loving family members. Every single nurse and doctor who met Lincoln commented on how amazing he was and how cute. In fact, it was always the first thing that they said. They would come over to attend to him and say, well, aren't you a little cutie? I think it was his nose which upon inspection was actually like his dad's when he was a baby, or possibly his hair. 
His strawberry blonde fluffy hair is undeniable. I wonder where he possibly got that. <laughs> we absolutely adored stroking his hair, especially as Allie and Drew had the opportunity to hold, bathe, and read stories to Lincoln. My fondest memories will always be watching. Drew and Allie care for Lincoln, always putting his needs and best interests before their own. They are amazing parents. One thing I am positive of is our little Link Stink got his strength and bravery from them. Watching Drew and Allie's courage throughout all of this has been so uplifting. Lincoln is so lucky to have them, and I know he chose them because of who they are. Strong, amazing parents with great faith who trust in our Savior Jesus Christ and his plan. I remember talking one night as Lincoln's health was declining and we knew that he would not make it. Drew took his fingers about an inch apart and said, this is what we see, Allie. And in actuality, this is what Lincoln's life actually is. Someday we will understand this, but I believe in this. I know he has important work to do, and he is special enough that he is just not going to do it here. And although those are hard words to hear, you didn't have to be around Lincoln long to know that they were absolutely true. He is such a special little boy, our little Link. Lincoln was preceded in death by his two special great grandmas who we know are taking care of him until we can see him again. He will be missed by his earthly family, but we know he has a greater work to do on the other side. One of my very favorite primary songs is the family is of God. In the chorus of that song, it says, God gave us families to help us become who he wants us to be. This is how he shares his love for the family is of God. This song has continually been running through my head as I have been thinking about things to share about Lincoln. How lucky and loved are we, Lincoln's family, that such a special spirit was given to us. A few hours after he was born, Drew shared a message of his birth in our family message. Callie responded with, I feel so much love for little Lincoln already. We're so happy he's part of his family. Truer words have never been spoken. I will always be so grateful that Lincoln is part of our family. Although he was only physically with us for a short time, I cannot imagine life without Lincoln. He has forever changed me. I have thought a lot about little Lincoln and his time in the pre-existence. I imagine he knew his time on earth would be short. Maybe we all did. As we left the spirit world, I picture him giving hugs and reassurance that all would be okay, reminding us to love each other and help each other so that we will all be back together someday. I think I speak for all of us when I say we will always be striving to be better so we can be together with him someday. I truly know that is why God gave us families, so that we can help each other be better and be the best that we can be. I know that our little Linkster will be helping us and loving us from the other side, giving us a little meaningful squeeze here and there, reminding us we can do this. He is here and it can all be okay. Samuel loves you, Mr. Lincoln.
and I will see you again someday. I say these things in the name of my son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Probably wasn't the best idea for me to speak today, but I'm honored to do it because my boy would want me to. <laughs> but chances are, if you're here today, you're probably wondering what the story is behind our sweet angel boy. And it would be my honor to tell his story <laughs> because it brings me so much joy to share about his life, which is full of so many miracles. <laughs> Up until 31 weeks, my pregnancy had been completely normal. It was that week that Drew and I went in for an extra ultrasound that would change the course of our life. Typically, they don't do ultrasounds that late in the game, but as first-time parents, we were really excited to see our boy and just felt like we should check in on him. And uh, I'm so glad that we did. It was at this ultrasound that we learned that our son wasn't measuring as big as he should be and that his brain in particular wasn't developing correctly. This finding sent us to some more specialists that would soon confirm our worst nightmare was coming true. Our son not only had brain abnorm abnormalities, but they noticed that his heart wasn't working properly. He was a few weeks behind on his growth and his left foot hadn't developed correctly either. The first doctor we talked to Warren suggested us that these findings were, gave a probability that our son would most likely be stillborn and immediately referred us to primary children's to meet with their fetal center team for further evaluation. A week and a half and a quick hospital or three stays later, because Lincoln liked to keep us on our feet, um, we were finally able to get some more tests done, which led to more answers. After meeting with the fetal cardiologist team at Primaries, we discovered that Lincoln had an interrupted aortic arch with ventricular septal defect type B. I've had lots of time to practice that. Um, I will spare you the medical details, but basically that meant that he would need to be kept on a special medicine to stay alive once he was born and um, that when he was big enough, he would have to have two to three open heart surgeries to fix his heart. In addition to this diagnosis, we learned that Lincoln had a few other challenges going on in his sweet little body. Areas in his brain, such as the cerebellum and brainstem, were measuring small. He was measuring small, and there were several abnormal structural abnormalities that would likely affect his ability to breathe on his own. However, none of these findings led to a solid diagnosis, and quite honestly, I didn't want to believe them, and because I knew my boy was stronger than that and that he would defy the odds. The specialists inferred that because all this was going on, there may be an underlying genetic condition that caused all of these things to happen, but they wouldn't be able to tell us how this would play out until Lincoln was born. In the meantime, all we knew is that we needed Lincoln to grow. So that's what we prayed for, and that's what he did. Like his grandma said, we... Um, the doctors kept on saying that he would probably weigh around three pounds and we really needed him to grow, but I knew that he was bigger than that and I knew that he would be born bigger. I just felt it. Um, he did need to be six pounds in order to get his heart surgeries, so the bigger that he get, could get, the better. Um, I attribute the fact that he was born so big to the fact that all of you guys prayed for us and prayed for him. And this extra pound really was one of was a miracle, one of the first of many miracles that we saw in his life. It was also a miracle that we had requested that extra ultrasound. I truly believe that had we not had that ultrasound that day, our boy's conditions would have flown under the radar. Looking back to what we know now, if that was the case, Lincoln definitely wouldn't have been able to get the medical help he needed to live and survive past birth. So I'm so grateful that we were able to get the answers we needed so that we could be in the place where we could actually meet our son. In fact, the sole fact that Lincoln survived a birth was another miracle. My induction and labor process was extremely scary. With back-to-back -back intense contractions, Lincoln's poor little body couldn't keep up. His heart rate kept dropping, and as a result, we had to do an emergency C-section to get him out ASAP. 
When he was finally born, it took a team of 10 plus specialists to intubate him and stabilize his breathing. It took so long to get him stable, both Drew and I genu genuinely thought that he didn't survive birth, but he did. And the sole fact that he made it through shows how much of a fighter our boy was. And that was the biggest miracle of all. Getting to spend the 10 days we had with our boy was truly the highlight of my life. <laughs> Each day we had with him was a miracle. <laughs> After he was born, we got all the recommended tests done to try to provide a better prognosis for what his life may look like and rule out any prenatal findings. It was these answers that truly revealed how lucky we were to spend this precious time with our boy. These tests revealed that our sweet boy was born with not one, but two rare genetic conditions, trisomy 7 and monosomy 8. If you know anything about genetics, you know that we should all have 23 pairs of chromosomes. This means that instead of having two number, se number seven chromosomes, he had three. And instead of having two number eight chromosomes, he only had one. The chances of being born with trisomy seven alone are one in three million. There have only been 20 or so cases of monosomy eight reported since it was discovered in the 70s. So combine these two and Lincoln was quite literally one in a billion. That just shows how special he was. These genetic findings were responsible for all of his birth slash growth defects Lincoln had going on inside of his body. Although his body looked perfect from the outside, on the inside his body was fighting to stay alive. I will spare you the long list of what that looked like for him, but his trisomy 7 affected over 600 individual genes and the outlook for his life was not good. With this in mind, statistically and scientifically speaking, Lincoln should never have made it to birth. Most babies with trisomy 7 don't survive past 10 weeks gestation, but Lincoln was a fighter. He defied all of the odds just to be here and meet his mom and dad and family. And I will forever be grateful that the number one wish that I had and my number one prayer to meet him came true. As you can see, everything about Lincoln's life was a miracle. I truly don't know how he made it here, yet yet lived as long as he did. But I do know that that time we spent with him was a gift straight from heaven and straight from God. Lincoln is my reminder that miracles exist and that God is real. If he taught me anything in his life, he taught me how to love deeply and showed me what true joy really is. I've never felt happier in my whole entire life than when I was with Lincoln. The spirit of Christ was truly always with him. He radiated a sense of light, joy, and peace that I have never felt from someone before. And if you met him, I know you felt that too. I hope all of you here today have been able to feel his sweet spirit and can carry that forward, forward with you into your life as you, as you leave today. I hope and pray that everyone can be more like Lincoln, strong, Christ-like, pure, loving, and a fighter. Mama loves you, angel boy. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
I'll be honest, I wish that would have lasted forever. <laughs> oh. um, I'm so proud of my wife. <laughs> Seeing her become a mom has been the greatest blessing of my life. <laughs> um, I'm going to stick to the script. <laughs> What is a miracle? For Moses, oh gosh. For Moses, it was parting the Red Sea. For David, it was defeating Goliath. For Daniel, it was surviving the lion's den. And for me, it was Lincoln. As Ali said, um, Lincoln had a few different uh, challenges genetically. However, what we learned was that he definitely was his parents' child. Lincoln was born with his dad's nose. He also had his he also had my long fingers and toes. <laughs> and while I wasn't born with red hair, my siblings might have something to say about that. Um, so Lincoln was definitely born with, with my looks. <laughs> but he was born with his mom's personality. <laughs> Lincoln was strong. He was a fighter. He was brave. And he was extremely faithful. <sighs> However, the best word that I can think of to describe Lincoln is celestial. He truly was perfect and commanded the spirit. I I told Allie and the rest of my family that when I was with Lincoln, that was the closest I've ever felt to the Savior. And I've met the prophet. He was so close. Always. One of the things that um, Ali and I have taken a lot of comfort in is knowing who Lincoln is in the company of um, mainly both of Ali's grandmas, Grandma June and Grandma Carolee. We know that they were there for him and welcomed him to the other side. I've also taken a lot of comfort in um, the words of our prophets. And in D&C, um, section 138, it says, um, this is Joseph F. Smith. He has a vision of the spirit world. And he says, among the great and mighty ones who were assembled in this vast congregation of the righteous were Father Adam, the ancient of days and father of all, and our glorious mother Eve, with many of her faithful daughters who had lived through the ages and worshiped the true and living God. Noah, who gave warning of the flood, Shem, the great high priest, Abraham, the father of the faithful, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses, the great lawgiver of Israel, and all these and many more, even the prophets who dwelt among the Nephites and testified of the coming of the Son of God, mingled in the vast assembly and waited for their deliverance. The prophet Joseph Smith and my father Hiram Smith, Brigham Young, John Taylor, Wilfred Woodruff, and other choice spirits who were reserved to come forth in the fullness of time to take part in the laying of the foundation of the great Latter-day work. And of course, the leader of all these people is the Savior, Jesus Christ. As Lincoln was passing, Ali said to him, go give Jesus a hug. And when she said that, Lincoln opened his eyes for the very last time. <sighs> throughout Allie's pregnancy and throughout Lincoln's life, one thing came to symbolize him, um, symbolize our boy, and that was foxes. Foxes symbolize um, cleverness, playfulness, mischievousness, beauty, and protection. When Allie told me she was pregnant, she gave me a stuffed fox that we have loved on ever since. 
We bought him a little fox outfit. His hospital blankets and boppy consistently had foxes on them, and even a fox um, personalized book off Amazon. This one. <laughs> um, when we found out that Lincoln had some challenges, um, we read him story every night because we didn't know how much time we'd get with him. And uh, this is probably where I'm going to cry the most, but I'm going to read you guys this story. It's called Lincoln, You're My Everything. And it goes, Lincoln, did you know you're my everything, said Big Fox one evening. You tell me all the time, said Lincoln, but what is everything? Oh, everything is the best thing you could be. It's every new flower that blooms in the spring and every drop of rain that cools the summer. It's what it feels like to ride down the longest hill in the world or to float up the highest clouds in the sky. Everything is warmer than the softest penguin in the snow and stronger than the tallest llama in the jungle. And I always stopped right here and I said, Lincoln, don't listen to this book. There's no llamas in the jungle. <laughs> Everything is big enough to hold the, all the new friends your heart could ask for and small enough to carry with you everywhere you go. Everything means I love you with all my heart on your happy days and on your hard days. And it means I will always be there during the long, long nights. Best of all, everything lasts forever. Longer even than the longest story that was ever written. Wow, Braid Lincoln. There was a comforting silence. Then Lincoln whispered, if everything means all that, then you're my everything too. Um, just in closing, I want to share a story. Um, when Allie and I were deciding um, whether or not we wanted to have a baby, um, we wanted to make sure we were making the right choice. And so we went to the temple. Um, that came and went, and we went home, and Allie and I said a prayer together. And a story came to mind. It's found in 1 Nephi 17. Um, Nephi and his family had traveled through the wilderness for eight years. And eventually, they come to the ocean, and they stop and they um, named the Lamb Bountiful um, because of you know all the fruit that was there and they were at the ocean and they were happy and the next day after they get there the Lord commands Nephi to build a boat and I can imagine how hard that was for him about traveling for eight years just to reach the just to reach Bountiful and to be so happy and I can imagine that in this moment the Lord said to him I know you're happy right now but if you can cross a raging sea, I'm going to make you happier than you could ever imagine. <laughs> and that was an answer then. And that was an answer now. Allie and I might be at a raging sea, but I know Lincoln is happier than ever. Um, I'm so proud of my son. He was such a fighter. 
and he taught me so much about love and about being faithful. He deserved more, but he was everything I could have asked for. I love you, baby boy. And I'll see you again one day. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I was happier sitting over on the bench there. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm just overwhelmed at the support that has been given by everybody from neighbors and friends and, and family. And I'm so proud of Allie and Drew. And they're great examples of good parents. Um, I, I had several friends given us uh, notes and texts to lift this up. Um, I had a talk sent to me earlier this week. Um, it was on overcoming adversity. It was called Love It, Come What May. Um, this is a, a little, this is from uh, Elder Joseph Worthland, and it, it's a little snippet from it that one of the blessings of the gospel is the knowledge that when the curtain of death signals the end of our mortal lives, life will continue on the other side of the veil. There will be given new opportunities. Not even death can take that from us. Eternal blessings promised by a loving Heavenly Father. I know as we were down there with Allie and Drew, Allie just kept saying, he is the perfect boy. And I want her to know that he is, he was perfect in spirit. I know that Lincoln is on the other side of the veil with his grandmothers. And he had more work to do on the other side. I pray that we can keep this eternal perspective and know that our Heavenly Father loves us. and He loves them. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn will be hymn 304, Teach Me to Walk in the Light. After our, we'll have a closing prayer by Lincoln's great-grandpa, Calvin Jensen. Our pallbearers will be his uncles, Brett Glover, Austin Glover, Logan Bragger, Jensen Bragger, Holden Bragger. And honorary pallbearers that weren't able to attend will be Tim, Timothy Lunt and Camden Beard.
our kind Father in Heaven. We are grateful for the opportunity we had today to come and learn about the life of Lincoln Drew Glover. We're grateful for thy son and the sacrifice he made. We're the grateful for the chance we have to return to thee. We're grateful for the plan of salvation and the fact that we can be together forever. We ask now for a special blessing on Drew and Allie and their family and friends that they'll be able to remember the spirit of Lincoln. We ask that we might be privileged to have the light as we go through our lives that we will do the things that we need to do to be able to return to Thee and to become that eternal family. Again, we are grateful for all the blessings that Thou hast provided for us here on this earth. And we ask now as we go to the internment that we'll be able to drive safely and arrive and further partake, partake of this day. We ask these things now in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.